I think the China is going to favor its local producers like Neo and others, Xpeng. Uh, and I think they're granting subsidies to Neo, which is the battery swap company, even on its very high end cars, which they are not granting to Tesla. So it's obvious, and it has always been obvious that China would favor a local producer. But what we are seeing from uh, China, uh, and particularly Tesla, is exports into Europe. Uh, where it does not yet have a plant. Uh, and what we're hearing is uh, the, uh, especially in Germany, but all over Europe, where their, their standards are extremely high for cars in terms of design and performance, uh, that they would prefer cars from Shanghai, which is a much newer plant and uh, much more productive, much more efficient in terms of uh, these design, perf perfecting these designs, than is Fremont. Uh, and so I think we're seeing a big export market develop uh, from China into Europe. Uh, and uh, I think China will like that. China wants to be known not for shipping or exporting, you know, cheap right. goods, but also high-end goods. So this could be the beginning of a trend. So. So is China at risk then for Tesla? I mean, should... Yeah. I, as, I don't think they're gonna shut down the factory at all. I think that that okay. factory will be used much more for exporting than we once imagined. I will say that uh, Tesla's cars in, in China uh, have sold very well until very recently. I'm sure the publicity, uh, uh, the pub publicity it has received, has cooled cooled uh, uh, Tesla's jets in China. But uh, it's uh, it's been uh, fortuitous that this export market has opened up at the same time. A limited run supercar called the EP9, as well as the introduction of the Neo brand. They put together this phenomenal vehicle, handfuls of them only, but just to establish the brand and the reputation. Like Tesla, NIO has distanced itself from the traditional automakers, associating more as a tech company. They make no secret of the fact that they're a tech company first and they're highly inspired by Tesla. The cars have some high-tech touches, such as an integrated smart assistant. They have this cute little thing called Nomi. It's an AI assistant and you can give it commands to do virtually everything you want. Put the window up, put the window down, temperature, music changes. Uh, let's take a selfie. Neo has emphasized that it's a lifestyle brand. Owners get access to a social network and private social spaces called Neo Houses. These gorgeous places called Neo Houses where owners gather to go to the library, have their kids play, drink coffee, hang out. It's just a house, a community. So that's one big way in which They've driven tremendous levels of loyalty. And it's similar, I think, to, to what Tesla has done here, to what Porsche has done you know, for, for decades. You, you have people kind of associating the brand with more than just a vehicle, but a certain, certain lifestyle. And that is Neo, uh, the electric car maker, the company uh, coming out with its deliveries. And it looks like the deliveries are just under 25,800 uh, in the quarter. Um, and just under 10,000 in March, which is an increase of about 37.6% year over year. Um, it's interesting here, Saz, because we have obviously seen shutdowns in China, for example, that were happening during the quarter and yet get these delivery numbers. These numbers didn't really do it for me, uh, Julie. March uh, deliveries up 37.6% year over year. First quarter deliveries up 28.5%. My read there is that these are now numbers that are cooling from triple digit growth rates over the past two years. And that is a red flag, especially stacked up against bigger picture here, Julie. It is exciting to see what companies like Neo and Xpeng, they are working on. Uh, a lot of these cars, I, I look at the X, what Xpeng uh, recently put out, they can park themselves in a parking garage. Uh, my car can't do that. It's just a fascinating time to be in the car business. It's, it's quite exciting, actually. And in China, one company wants to become the Tesla killer. If you look at Tesla, it has been established for 16 years. NIO has only been established for over four years. In the world of electric vehicles, there's one name. Tesla, up 19% year to day. Tesla's recent stock surge. Tesla, of course. And then there's everyone else. And one of Tesla's biggest customers right now, China. 
the country is quickly becoming the fastest growing purchaser of electric vehicles or EVs in the world. China is a huge game changer. Some say that by 2030, about 40% of Tesla's sales will come from China. But Tesla isn't the only EV company on the block. Far from it. As a result of that skyrocketing demand, there are now over 600 EV companies in China vying to compete with the electric car giant. Neo, one of China's brightest EV companies, is on the tips of both consumers as well as investors' tongues. Over the course of 2020, Neo's stock price increased a thousand percent, and investors threw around terms like the Chinese Tesla and the Tesla Killer. It has many names, but essentially it is one of the most promising and the most prominent electric vehicle companies that have come out of China. But just two years ago, the company was nearly bankrupt. This is the story of how Neo came back from the brink of bankruptcy to become one of the hottest electric vehicle companies on the planet. To put Neo's importance into perspective, it's valued higher than American car manufacturing giant GM. In 2020, the company saw record demand for its model lineup, with year-over-year -year growth of 121%. And with the release of the ET7 sedan in early 2021, the stock immediately took another jump. Very similar to Tesla in some extent is that the company has been focusing on really promoting it as a, itself as this uh, digital or premium electric car manufacturer. But also like trying to, to make it more appealing to the, the middle class uh, consumers in China. We are always very clear about our target user groups. For example, the price of our ET7 is similar to the ones of the best-selling mid-size or full-size sedans in China, like BMW's 5-class, Audi A6, Mercedes-Benz E-Class. But Neo wasn't always on a clear path to success. There's a reason EV stocks are so volatile. And it's because at any moment, companies are teetering on the edge of bankruptcy and NEO was no exception. It was a smallish, fairly new uh, car company that faced these really major uh, fire-related recalls early in the year, and then its sales were withering. And for that, there are many reasons. Its most formidable rival, which is Tesla, entered the Chinese market in 2019. Alongside competition from Tesla, sales of electric cars plateaued in 2019, partly because of decisions taken by the Chinese government. The Chinese government cut the direct purchase subsidies for electric vehicles by over 50% in 2019, which is like the, the largest ever uh, cut. But in early 2020, Neo's fortunes changed. While China's subsidy cuts almost sank the company, an investment from a Chinese province saved it. Neo managed to strike a deal with this uh, Chinese city of Hefei. In February 2020, they basically did this help Neo inject the, the cash flows and help them to deal with the cash flow issues. As part of the deal, Neo agreed to establish headquarters in the city of Hefei's economic and technological development area, as well as provide investors a 24.1% stake in the company. Investors were confident that with liquidity problems taking a back seat, Neo could finally tackle the monumental task of scaling up the manufacturing of its vehicles. So scaling up was a big problem for Tesla because as uh, Musk famously said, Tesla was not trying to invent the machine, which means the car, but actually the machine that makes the machine, which means Tesla or Musk was, were trying to reimagine the auto manufacturing process. And manufacturing is what NIO is hoping will give them an edge. While their ES6 SUV costs more than a third more than that of Tesla's Model 3 sedan, NIO is using innovative features and services to bring their costs down. The biggest thing that NIO is doing differently from Tesla is that it has outsourced its manufacturing to a state-owned company which has more experience in this matter. Another big difference is NIO's subscription model that aims to simplify ownership by taking away the risks of owning the battery part of the vehicle. And so what, what the customers would do is just buy this car or the car shell, so to speak, and, and rent the battery from NIO for a monthly fee. The final difference between Tesla and NIO is how they both approach the problem of range anxiety, 
which is the term for how EV owners worry that their battery will run out before they reach their destination. So what NEO is um, suggesting people do is make use of their battery swap services. So in this, a NEO car user would essentially drive into this uh, swapping station and in a matter of few minutes, NEO says about three minutes, their depleted battery could be taken out and replaced with a fully charged battery and they just go back and hit the road. NEO says they're working on a second generation of swapping stations and plans to add 300 more of those stations around China. You know, the underlying thing, Judge, about these stocks is when, when, when everybody in the market hates them and you start getting analysts calling them uninvestable, you have to tiptoe into the tulips because the, the fundamental reason for owning these is exposure to the Chinese economy and the consumer. The growth rates inherent in these names are 20, 30, 40, 50, 55 percent annual growth. You can't get that anywhere else. Now, yeah, there's policy issues. Yes, there's a concern about ADRs and all of that. But how else do you get exposure in your portfolio to growth like this? You have to hold your nose on the volatility, but the fundamentals are why you invest. And you pick your opportunities when you get people slashing. They went on sale 7 to 9% on Monday. And look at the upside. I mean, look, yes, it's volatility, but this is a time to actually start to own China again. These balance sheets are huge. These are mega, mega, mega cap stocks. They're massive. You can't get that in the fangs anymore. We're just not growing the fangs that fast. You have to be a decade ago or even more. So you're now getting a chance to buy Amazon essentially 17 years ago. 